So, as I said, I did find the story by Ezekiel Kralin, and I see that it is the story that I started to read to you last week, and I'm not sure what went wrong. But I was tired, but there was also, every time um, the pterodactyl, the imaginary puppet pterodactyl on the shoulder of the narrator in his story said, uh, Grack, I would have to say it because I'm reading this aloud. And each time it made it just worse and worse and worse until whatever else was going on in my brain made me stop entirely and say, I'm tired of this. And I stopped reading his story about a third or a half of the way through it and just skipped past it. And then later on, you know, when I went to upload the recording, you know, after the show was over and, you know, it had gone out on the air the way it was, but I thought, I don't know, this all sounds like, why go halfway into this thing and then stop like that? And I I did a thing I hardly ever do, and I cut the um, bad part out of the recording and uploaded it. So um, Zeke sent me only the first part of the story to read the same thing as last week. And the pterodactyl is saying grack again every place, and I'll see if it has the same effect this week. Maybe I'll bail at some point, but it's not very long. I ought to be able to take it at least through five or ten minutes of this. Terry, P-T-E-R-R-Y, The Matchmaker by Ezekiel Kralin. Email correspondence May 9th and 10th last year. Subject, the path to Molly Stones is paved with good intentions, date May 9th. With courage and trepidation, I girded my loins this morning and marched on down to Molly Stones, and guess who was the only cashier when I stepped in? Larkin. But he was turned away from me, bent over and browsing through what I guess was the store's weekly circular. Plus, there were shelves partially blocking his view of the lobby. So I scuttled sideways up the adjacent aisle like a crab to disappear ASAP. Found the English muffins at the far end of the store, but sadly the only Rudy's brand they had left were the plain white flower ones. So I settled for two packages of Thomas's light multi-grain English muffins, something my corner shops don't carry. Now, there was still the problem of checking out my items. While standing in the aisle where the muffins resided and from where I could see Larkin bagging produce for a customer, Terry Pterodactyl's diminutive form alighted upon my left shoulder and whispered, Just do it, Zeke. Nothing to worry about. Grack. And look, another cashier arrived, so you can go to him instead of your arch nemesis. But there are now two people in line for the second cashier, and none for Larkin. He is just standing there. Then place the damn muffins back on the shelves and hustle your sorry ass back outside through aisles two and seven where he won't see you. Grack, Terry exclaimed, but with a chuckle and a glint in his peepers. A lack of muffins is not the end of the world for Yogg's sake. Um, I hesitated, looking over my desired muffins still in hand, drooling over the thought of crunchy, yeasty goodness slathered with I can't believe it's not butter upon my tongue, fulfilling my oral craving like nothing else could in this world or the next. Larkin's voice suddenly disrupted my reverie. Have a nice day, young man, he addressed an elderly fellow with a walker on tennis balls, his purchased goods somehow secured to it in a large cloth bag. I imagine the items contained therein were lightweight and few. I shivered with glee as his sonorous benediction rippled through my eardrums and sparked my prefrontal cortex with a juicy burst of dopamine. Sidebar. Now, this is a perfect example, Watson, of how consulting with ChatGPT aided me in being scientifically, actor, scientifically accurate, re-endorphins versus dopamine, and whether basal ganglia or prefrontal cortex was the best way to go. Well, that really grabbed your psychic libido, didn't it, Zeke? Grack. I blushed for a nanosecond, then replied, OK, I'm going to do it, and dropped the two packages into my shopping basket. Good idea, Terry replied. After all, he already knows you're here and did not put up a fuss, right? Yeah, I agreed. He is a sharp cookie. 
Not only that, but he's also telepathic, as you know all too well. Grack. Of course, I acknowledged. He probably summoned me here in the first place, like he did back in 2012. Led me directly to Moby Dick's, where I discovered him playing pool, upon which I learned he recently moved from south of Market to here in the Castro, after not seeing him for almost four years, wondering what happened to him. Right, replied Terry. And you even wrote about it in your book, Free Me From This Bond, Chapter 2, which you cleverly entitled Moby's Dick. Hey, get this, Zeke, I actually have that chapter's URL memorized. Grack. Terry paused then, and after ten seconds or so I grew impatient and queried, Well, what is it? He then took a deep breath, puffed out his chest, and recited zekeblog.wordpress.com slash 2012 slash 03 slash 28 slash M-O-B-Y-S hyphen D-I-C-K. Phew! Impressive, I declared, and without a single grack in the mix. Ah, shucks, he shyly spoke, but it's really easy to do if you're telepathic yourself. Grack. Gee, I never thought of that, I mused, but it makes perfect sense. Terry didn't reply, but after a moment or two, it finally dawned on me. Hey, if Larkin's telepathic, and you are too, you might be in communication with him right now and all my hesitation about coming here was just foolish worry on my part. Correcta mundo, he replied. Now get this, Zeke. Hold on to your hat, please, or your muffins. And with that, Terry cleared his throat with another grack, then continued. For all, all capital letters, practical purposes, as applied to your situation, in the here and now, I am Larkin having fun with you and always have been since I first appeared in your world with that delectable little sci-fi Sherlock Holmes spoof you composed back in January 2021 in your Brindlekin Tales chapter called Letter to the Landlord Part 2. May I remind you, he continued with another grack. He did take you aside one day when your paths crossed on Market Street and dramatically declared our friendship, our being brought together, is an incredible God send. Yes, he did, I replied, my heart aglow in reminiscence. That was back in 2014, I think. Exactly. Grack. You wrote about it in a blog entry you call... Here's why I stopped last time. Zekeblog.wordpress.com, 2014-05-24-stepping-into-dark-waters. Stepping into dark waters. There's a good reason he's been bellowing nonsense on his nighttime strolls from work toward home these past few weeks. Haven't you? You mean he's waking me up, preparing for us to get together again? I interrupted, only this time on a remarkable level. Bingo and grack, Terry asserted. The fantasies you've had on and off over the past decade or so about this astounding reunion were not lost. Not, sorry, not just speculation, but all capital letters, premonitions of foretelling by the angels of a most incredible destiny for you both. You're a shaman yourself, Zeke, and a very good one at that. Well, grack me with a wooden spoon, I exclaimed, then walked up to the second cashier's counter. Even though Larkin had no one to serve at the moment, Terry had vanished by then. My point in doing this was to show respect toward Larkin and not come off like a pushy old coot. Oh, wow, you work here now. Quel surprise. Besides, he would have called me over if he wanted while I was patiently standing behind one and a half customers. I say half because the first patron was already packing her items in a large bag. At this point, after dropping the muffins into my backpack, there was no way I could avoid walking right by Larkin in order to exit Molly Stones, and the path was narrow, so coming within four feet of him could not be avoided. I did not look up at him, nor in any other way give him my attention. I couldn't even see if he were looking at me, because I held my head down till I reached the entrance and stepped back outside into the sunny, breezy, warm day. Conclusion, I presume my weekly muffin purchases will be filled with dramatic nooks and crannies for the unforeseeable future. Read, The Path to Molly Stones is paved to good intentions. Date, May 10th morning. Watson wrote, So you and Larkin never spoke. I replied, Nope. I surely would have mentioned that in my tale if we did, and put it in 72-point bold font 
with virtual confetti all over it and a marching band jiff. Funny how we both now have drama around Rudy's muffins. And we both have a very difficult person in our lives to deal with because of commitment to an ideal. In a weird kind of way, we lead parallel lives. Cue Twilight Zone theme music via attached audio file to be continued. Well, that was... um, I don't know what it is about this. This particular story, it's just... That is interesting because it is annoying as fuck and there's nothing really particularly different about this than any of his other stories. What is the... I don't really believe there's anything subconscious going on in people. I think, you know, we're who we are, but maybe there's something going on that I don't see in myself, that every time the word grack appears, I just feel like stopping there and the reciting the um, URLs, you know, the reading out of the URLs. One of them, you know, it's typed in phonetically for me to... Weird. Just weird. Okay, well, that's at least I didn't skip it. So we'll see what happens next week. I don't know. I don't know. It's a mystery. That's what Watergate in the 60s and stuff have taught us.